if you look at asia it's not a surprise you know with three and a half billion people with rising discretionary in spending with savings at 30 percent which are looking for investment options it's clearly a place which is growing rapidly and with that growth comes growth for every industry every customer in every industry and our customers are successfully realizing this growth but realizing growth in asia is not easy you have to navigate through a lot of challenges asia is a heterogeneous marketplace a conglomerate of 15 to 20 countries where practically every bit of infrastructure that you can think is having unique local stamp whether it's clearing infrastructure banking infrastructure market infrastructure whether it's the local regulations and the way the local regulations are spelled whether they are cross border regulation capital regulation a simple thing like cross border fund transfer or foreign exchange the regulations do exist the paperwork does exist and navigating all this heterogeneity is not easy. The new thing that's happening in Asia is the digital identity of Asia. If you look at the digital footprint today, and the word digital gets used very often across the board, I'm sure. But if you look at some of the real statistics, if you look at the footprint on the ground today, Asia probably dominates as a region when it comes to digital journeys. Now, when you adopt these digital journeys, you realize sustainable growth over a period of time. And that is something that Asia is probably unique. Now again, it's not one Asia standard across the board. As you travel from India to China to Indonesia, the underlying infrastructure does vary. The underlying regulation that associate with that infrastructure does vary. And one has to navigate those journeys. But that's where we do see a lot of evolution and a lot of, lot of separation of winners and losers in every industry segment happening. And it's happening very rapidly. The question, of course, is which segment, which industry is realizing the biggest benefit? And the answer to that is financial services. Be it the banking ecosystem. Of course, banking is being disrupted by fintechs and payment intermediary. It is insurance industry. With the disposable saving that the Asians have, the industry is growing rapidly and Asia is the most underinsured region in the world. But today, the digital insurance players are also rapidly emerging. The investment industry, the digital brokers are emerging. So if you see the overall ecosystem, the existing business players are rapidly growing their businesses. But by the same token, a parallel industry is coming up, which is the digital native companies in each of these segment. But the market is so big that each of these players, the new as well as existing players are growing rapidly. And when you look at this ecosystem in Asia, and when you are looking for one of the best examples in Asia, Pingan probably tops our mind. Pingan is not just an insurance company. Of course, they are a big insurance player, but they have successfully diversified themselves across the digital ecosystem that we are talking about. Right from healthcare and an app like Good Doctor to digital investment company to a company that can provide digital infrastructure to other companies. They have created a series of digital assets and created a digital ecosystem, I would say, across the financial services spectrum. And managing and navigating that journey very successfully. Now, we are really proud to be associated with Pingan. Just to kind of quote from Citibank perspective, our digital strategy is simple, global, digital. We want to simplify every interaction that our clients have with us, our clients client have with us, make it digital, make it sustainable, make it global. I'm really proud to say we started this journey with Pingan some time back. Pingan happened to be our first client in China. China is the biggest country and probably the nerve center for Asia. It happened to be our first client to try API, automated payment interfaces. And that journey over a period of time has evolved a lot. I'm really happy that Michael Fay, Michael is head of strategy for Pingan One Connect. Pingan One Connect is a company that is supporting the financial industry, over 500 banks with different digital tools like Chatbox. And a company of this size and scale, a new generation company, a digital native company, has been our proud partner on this journey of Digital for City. There are actually very different level of problems. There are group-wise problems, more important issues, for example, like say cash flow forecasts to understand the profitability of the different business. And there are minor or smaller issues like to build a model for certain product, or there are certain other issues like say using OCR to scanning for the expense sheet. So within Pingan, we actually had different treatments for the different level of issues. There are group-wide issues, 
which is more decided top down. For example, like the Treasury services, upgrading the cash flow forecast, all these things. These are will be the top down issues, which will be discussed at the group management level to decide. Then there are certain issues. It's up to the subsidiaries themselves to decide. And there are even small issues who are up to the business unit. They will have their resource to allocate to certain IT developer resource to decide. Our current scope is actually focusing on understanding the issues and understanding the futures. For example, we want to understand, okay, what's the profitability of the different customer segment and what's going to change in the next 12 months. This is the current focus, and we are now currently rolling this out to the largest subsidiaries of the group. For example, the bank. The challenge is always on, on people, on talent. Okay. By talent, I mean people who understand both the business as well as the technology. You can find people who has very good knowledge about the technology, understand the blockchain, understand the biometric recognition, and you can have people who understand the business very well. But to do this, you actually need to combine these two together. You need someone who understands both the business or can use the latest technology to solve the business issues. So this is actually the biggest challenge of us, to find appropriate people who can help us using the latest technology while to solve the real business issues. Within Pingan Group, we actually had been using API, the general API solution for, for a very long time, over five, six years. For this particular treasury API services we are talking about, it was live last year. I think it's uh, less about improving the structure itself, it's more about how can we using this type of technology to solve further the business issues. As I explained earlier, we are currently focusing on understanding the status quo and to forecast the future. Now, I think we are doing something to more on the control and to set up, for example, to set the pricing for a certain customer segment, to set up compensation schemes for our arm. So we will try to use the, uh, the knowledge, the, state, uh, the understanding of the status quo actually to impact our business, to direct the business development. There's a, actually a lot of lessons to be, to be learned. But I think one, actually one biggest thing I would like to say is that uh, you actually have to be bold enough. Okay, you have to think big about what you can achieve. This is absolutely a great success for us. I think I still remember last year uh, when we showed this uh, solution to the whole executive group of, of Ping An. So we received a huge, I mean, enthusiasm about this. People get very excited. Wow, this is what we can achieve. So depending on the feedback from the top management team we have, I think this is, I would say this is a great success for us. The next step is for us is really to using this technology to help the business development. People usually see finance as uh, something to do the analytical things, uh, to manage the expense, to manage their capital. But now we're trying to have them more impact on our business development. As I said, how should I price for this particular coin? And what is the uh, incentive scheme I should give to my RMs to direct them to develop whatever client they want to, we want to have. Also for a PNC product, for example, an auto insurance product, how should I price that? What's the risk premium I would have in this particular product? So these are actually the things we are currently working on. We hope to use this technology to solve the business problems and to help us to generate more revenues.